All right, today we're going to be installing one of our Craftsman uh, frame doors. Uh, as you can see here, we have a, a single opening, so we're going to put in uh, a single door. The customer wanted to match the tile as close as we could, so we're, we're going with one of our old rub bronze uh, doors, the colors. Paul, what do we have to do when, uh, I know as we got here, there was a, a door currently here, so. Uh, All right, now we took out a lot older uh, chrome frame product. Uh, it's pretty outdated, but. The you know, main thing is we just want to get that door out and get the opening as clean as possible. The best thing to do, if you can get the anchors out, it's always better to pull them because I'll actually backfill all these holes with silicone just as a precaution because we want to prevent, not that water would get in there, but always again, preventative. Right. Uh, you want to get the surface as clean as possible. A lot of times I'll use either a single edge razor blade or you can use a, one of the best things, and I, I had it here a second ago, is a, a brand new uh, Lexan like putty knife because they have a real sharp edge on them and they won't scratch anything. Right. Um, on harder tile, this is one of the best things. It's just like a, uh, it's not really a Brillo pad, it's like a Scotch Brite pad. Um, this is a little bit more abrasive one, not the super light one that you'd use on uh, like Teflon pans. This is like for regular, you know, metal cookware. Right. You can use it on tile, like cultured marble, that kind of stuff I wouldn't use it on because it will scratch that kind of stuff. But on here, because, you know, this is a glazed surface, I mean, you can see how clean that is. You can't even really tell yeah. where the old door was. So. Yeah. And it's really important to make sure that you get all the silicone off here um, just because we want to make sure when we go over it with new silicone that it, it, it adheres to the right. tile, absolutely. not the old silicone. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, the customer would have had a choice. I know we had chose a door that's a little bit shorter, but if they wanted a steam shower, and a lot of times folks are going to steam showers, they can run that door all the way to the ceiling. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Now, like with the same situation you have here, this door is a little shorter. You always want to leave, you know, a few inches up here just for air exchange if you're not doing a steam shower. Right. Because it'll help keep, you know, cut down on mold and mildew because right. it'll allow that dry air to come in and the, the uh, moisture right. to evaporate out. So. Very good. All right. So well, measuring for a unit like this, fairly simple, right? Fairly simple. Um, you do want to check the outages on it. They're not, you know, like if this was a, a frameless type installation, we'd be a lot more concerned as far as uh, any outage because we're actually going to cut the glass for that outage. Here we've got a decent amount of adjustment, so, you know, we do want to make sure because you don't want to get surprised by, you know, three quarters of an inch or something, but, you know, quarter inch here is not going to be the end of the world. So. Right. All right. But, I mean, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and fill these holes all up. Just again, like I said, strictly a preventative thing. This is also a good time to use up one of your uh, silicone tubes that you've cut off huge. <laughs> you just want to fill it up till it comes down. Now when measuring, while Paul's doing that while measuring, we take a bottom measurement, but as he said, we like to make sure we put a level on the wall. Can't stress enough about uh, checking the wall conditions. It's the biggest mistake that we, that we see uh, as a manufacturer is folks don't uh, they don't check their wall condition, so sometimes there might be an outage that is tough, uh, especially like Paul said on a frameless. We need to know even if it's out more than a sixteenth so we can make an adjustment. These walls are perfectly plumb. I'm going to not put that in your silicone. So whoever did this actually used a level, and uh, I'm quite proud of them for that. On the height, uh, I, was, I asked the customer, since we weren't doing a steam shower, we didn't go all the way to the ceiling, they just wanted to match it up with a grout line. Once again, as we talked about in some of our other installations, um, Cardinal does, we offer a uh, different standard sizes. And by going with the standard height unit, uh, you can decrease your lead times and decrease the price of your unit. So, you know, on this one, since it's tiled all the way up, they could have really got away with uh, a unit, you know, anywhere in this area. Uh, this particular customer chose to match it up with the grout lines. So we did that. It did become a custom unit at that point. Uh, so it took a little, little bit longer to make. Uh, it was a little bit more expensive. That's pretty much it on that. Uh, as you notice, I kind of always like to go back, go over them with my finger, just to I want to make sure I get a good seal on the on the lip of it, so that you know we don't have any any issues on water intrusion. Right. Now I will tell you the one key thing here that's should be first thing as far as if you're getting ready to start your installation is you're unpacking your stuff. Uh, framed and the semi frameless type doors got a lot of small parts. Mm -hmm first thing you want to do is tape over the drain because if you lose a couple down there they're gone. They're <laughs> so, gone, all right. So and that actually worked out because that came right off of your packaging so oh, there you go. Out perfect. Perfect. Um, really first thing we're going to do we're just going to lay the curb down. We're already going to try and follow the existing lines so I know right where I'm going to land I'm going to follow this grout line right up the middle anyways. 
Um, now our jam is going to set to the outside of this curb. Obviously the lip is going to set to the outside to channel water back in. Um, like most curbs, this is just going to, we're going to have a basic glue down on it. Uh, we'll set it down with silicone underneath and then tape it in position while we position the wall jams. This curb is actually full width, unlike you know some of the other curbs. Yeah, the semi-frameless curb is a little bit thinner. Right. But on the Craftsman series, it is a wider curb. Now, on uh, any of these kind of silicone underneath the curb, you want to do it with your tube with laying up so that you're actually laying a, a round bead on there that's actually taller than the lip. So that when you press it down, it actually seals. If you just lay a flat bead on there, it's not going to actually touch anything because there is actually a lip on this. We already know where we're going to position this. Like I said, again, we're just kind of following the old grout line. So, I'll go ahead and, uh, I've already cut this to size. Of course, you can always use a, uh, a hacksaw. Uh, a miter saw is preferred. Uh, actual miter box electric saw is preferred. Uh, it's a lot cl quicker, cleaner, straighter. Uh, a hacksaw on something like this, since that's really the only thing we're going to cut right now. You're certainly fine with that. And I will tape this into position just to make sure I don't kick it by accident when we're doing the rest of the install. So basic tools for an install like this. You need a drill gun, you need a set of drill bits, um, Phillips head tip, probably a couple levels, masking tape, tape measure, silicone, silicone gun. Uh, hacksaw would be the, the bare minimum. If you have a chop saw, it's always going to make a cleaner cut. So you've taped it down. Taped it down, pretty much ready to level up our wall jams. Right. Now, uh, one thing I, on, on a dark you know, material like this, sometimes it's real hard to see a pencil mark or a pen. What I'm actually going to do is cut a couple little pieces of tape and just place them where I'm going to go and where the holes are so I can mark through the hole and see where it is and I'll just drill through the tape and then just peel it off. Um, just make my life a little easier. And it doesn't have to be exact, obviously. It's just so I can actually see the marks. Well, one thing we've kind of just discovered here, which is something that comes up from time to time, especially on a refit like this, um, the previous installer, um, instead of actually leveling the jam, actually followed the grout line exactly. Uh, the grout line is not perfect. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to have to move my curb a, a hair forward here just to make sure that we cover our existing holes. Um, that way, you know, they're not visible. Now we did check the other side here. We're good over here. We're just going to move the whole thing out a little bit just to even it up. So, all right. So we went ahead and moved our curb forward. Um, we just kind of split the difference here. We're going to cover pretty well, so it's you know not the end of the world again. It's just something we want to point out. Right. Um, now one thing I did do is as I moved that curb forward, you remember we put silicone underneath it, I went ahead and uh, slicked that and cleaned that up, you know, just to make sure that it doesn't get left out later. Because I'll also run a front and back bead on that and I don't want to be jumping over okay. old silicone. We talked a little bit about the importance of making sure this is, is straight, it's level. Um, and you said because if, if the door is closed and it's leaning out, it'll, it'll be sprung when you open it, correct? Correct. Make the door, you know, not necessarily rattle, but it'll make the door cut like pop towards you. So it's right. It's gonna make the door seem different than it really is. You know, it should when it closes, it should be a nice solid. Right. You know, like a Mercedes. And then I'm just gonna go to drill these. It's just a just simple tile, so just a standard masonry bit. Drill three sixteen, three sixteen, three sixteen, and I'm just going to drill right through the tape here. Just makes things a little easier. And this one actually is really easy. It's in the ground line. And we've talked on on other installation videos about sometimes when you're going into the tile, it's necessary to take that bit and work it a little bit so that that tip gets in a little. So when you're drilling it, you don't walk across the tile. Right, absolutely. This one was pretty easy since we fell right in the ground line, but. Actually, the bottom one is a little out of the ground line. Well, if you start notice, I started at an angle to cut into the edge of the tile, and then once it bit, I straightened out to actually make my cut. So, 
One thing here you want to remember is that you do have some wet silicone on the wall from patching those holes. So when you wipe the dust off, you know, try not to uh, make too big of a mess. All right, so we got all the holes drilled. We're going to put the wall panel up, right? Yeah. And put the wall those up. Pretty easy work. Correct? Pretty straightforward. Just going to take the uh, masonry anchors out of the kit there. Just going to go ahead and tap them all the way in flush. Again, you can uh, use a rubber mount if you don't happen to have a rubber mount. If you just had a regular hammer, you can uh, also do that. But just use the handle and then tap the head of it with your hand so you don't accidentally damage the wall or tile or crack anything. Again, just kind of a precautionary thing. I always like to fill my anchors silicone. Again, not that necessarily water might ever get to them, but it always gives you a leg to stand on if something else happens. One thing you want to make sure on uh, anything with channel, you want to make sure you got at least an inch and a half deep tip uh, without using an apex. Um, you want to make sure that you'll actually get down into the channel with the screw all the way down before the uh, chuck on the drill hits because otherwise you're going to end up scratching a lot of metal. In this particular case, not a big deal but because the front of this would be covered, but if this had a return panel or something, that would all be exposed. So. Right. Well, you also want to make sure that you can get the screw pushed all the way in, correct? Right. Absolutely. You know, these, like anything, I like to run the, the screw, just get it started in the anchor. Just to make sure that I don't accidentally run down the side of it and then risk cracking a tile. And like anything, especially using cordless tools, you want to be real careful you don't over torque these. And either pull the anchor out or damage anything. You know, I was just going to want to kind of do a little wobble test on them at the end, just make sure everything's tight. Otherwise, your door might rattle. Or Alright, sit on that. We got the wall channel up, we're ready for the door, right in the door. Right. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, I like to go ahead and put the uh, magnetic strike on here. Don't necessarily want to push it all the way down on some of these coated finishes. Um, if you push it all the way down, you might scratch it unnecessarily. Uh, it'll help me better get the door aligned here. So the easiest thing is just to try and get the bottom of the channel over and then just let it stand up and work its way over. Just to get this aligned. Now this is where you have your adjustment in the door, correct? Right, this is where you're going to get all your adjustment. Now of course, even though this, is, this door does have a lot of adjustment, um, for the installation sake, I'm still going to try and even it up as much as possible. Alright, uh, well, like I was saying, you can hold this door open 90 degrees without the screws in it. As mm -hmm. long as you don't let it start to swing this way, you know, if you're working by yourself, it's kind of convenient. That way you can kind of, once you get it where you want, hold the hinge in place once you've checked it for function, mm -hmm. which I checked this on the outside, so we're pretty much good. The magnet on this door is good enough that it'll actually hold itself once I let go. So, uh, really, all I got to do, you've got six. There's six pre-drilled holes. They're pre-marked on the on the interiors here. Mm -hmm. We're just going to drill through the latch jam into the wall jam. Anchor this to hold it in place. Same thing over here. We're just going to anchor the hinge jam and uh, really caulk it. Put the once you on. once you shut the door, then you measured to see uh, what, what's your optimal gap. What do you? Well, actually, on a fully framed door like this, mm -hmm. the optimal gap is whatever makes the magnets, the line. polarity on the magnets line up the best so you get the best suction so you get the best seal. Now see this is, it should give you an even gap when that happens. Right. So I mean that's about an eighth inch which is, that's about optimal. And you've got, you know, you, you saw it, you, you can hear it, it's, right. that's perfect. It's nice and quiet, good seal. So we took the adjustment, we pulled the door out, we pulled the latch jam out to get the proper adjustment. We made sure that our line has about an eighth inch gap, but more importantly, we made sure that the magnets uh, were touching. Right. And now you're going to use your eighth inch bit to drill the, 
the three on. pilot holes now that you've got your adjustment. Yeah, and we're just uh, we'll get it fairly evened up in here as far as their spacing here, just for mainly for appearance more than function. But uh, that's about it. On these, especially if you're working by yourself, instead of just drilling all six holes, go ahead and drill the top two, get put the screws in them. That way, if you start to move it a little as you're you know drilling the other holes, it's recoverable before you get to the bottom. Now realize that you've got the door screwed shut. Right. And one other thing you want to make sure on these when you as soon as the bit to this is a pre-drilled hole, they're not actually drilling through this. But as soon as your bit plunges through, that's as you know, don't keep playing on it. <laughs> that's pretty much it for the basic door installation. Now this one came with a uh, back-to-back -back handle. Uh, they all come with their own Allen wrench to release the set screws. I want to make everybody aware that this door usually comes with a standard handle. You do have your option. Uh, it's a little, almost like a little horseshoe or what we call a slimline pull. But this customer decided to upgrade to a C pull through the glass for a, a little bit uh, nicer look. And these are just going to back the stud all the way out. Make sure you keep the, the plastic washer in between. The easiest thing on these usually to do, just to get yourself started on the one, see it'll swing past the edge of the door. And once you've got that started, then take your other screw where you can take it off before. It's kind of easier if you kick it down a little bit too. That way there's a there's a a plastic grommet in there to kind of keep the keep the uh, screw from rubbing up against the glass. Give you an added layer of protection. All right, now we've got those finger tightened up. Uh, they're just a flat head on this on this particular handle. You just want to snug them a little, just a little more than snug them. Otherwise, you can crack these plastic washers. Um, that, that, like I said, that's perfectly tight. It won't. It should never come loose because you're going to actually tighten a set screw up against it. So there's no need to tighten it any more than that. One thing you want to keep in mind too, when you take these back these set screws off to take the handle apart, don't back them all the way out because you can only put them back in at about a half a turn of time. So if you've got them backed all the way out, you're going to take twice as much time to... You know, I know it may seem like a good idea to force the, the uh, wrench head around, but if you're not careful you can scratch the glass and then you're created a whole other issue. So. Just take the wrench out, just like I said, get it pretty tight. Pretty much all there is to it. Last two things we're going to do here. Now my curve's been sitting here for 15-20 minutes or so, so it's fairly tacked. So I should be able to take this tape off, plus I'm pinned down by my jams at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and take my tape off. And the reason I'm going to do that is so that... Uh, I can line up the drip rail here. Now the drip rail is going to come pre-cut for the door size, so you don't have to worry about that. What's nice, if we pull this out of here, it's kind of hard to see, so I'll just kind of start to peel it. This drip rail is actually, the, the uh, wiper on it is actually cut at a, at a taper. You can see how it's much, it's almost in the center here, and how far off center it is down there. The nice thing about that is, Go ahead and peel this off. Obviously, this is, this is upright. You have a trough that your water is actually going to run in, and the the wide end of this will be on the end that the handle is on, so that and I'll show you why here just in just a second, because this is actually going to help you align this so that it's slanted back down into the shower so any water that gets in this trough will actually run back into the shower. So it's actually going to help you out with the alignment of it, which is nice here. And then uh, another good thing about this, comes with a little roll of double face tape, which is really positioning tape so that you can uh, get the uh, drip rail on there and position properly before you put screws in it. And you uh, always want to put screws in it because Double face tape will uh, fail eventually in a shower with all the detergent and everything. So, 
I think the the vinyl you talked about that's real important. We have lots of people call and ask. They think that something's wrong with their vinyl because it is. Uh, it's got a perforated at an angle. They think that they got uh, a, a faulty a piece of vinyl. But the reason is to make sure that they know that the water's supposed to trip. That's another issue that I know. A lot of times these people don't put the drip rubs on. They put them on perfectly level, and they wonder why the water slings out of the tub. Well, and there's actually one more little thing on this drip rubs. Kind of keep. I'm gonna get you to hold it real quick. I'll throw this tape on here. One thing, anytime you're putting double face tape on, something like this, you tilt that up a little bit. If you pull it tight for your width and use your this thumb as a guide, kind of push towards it, you can get it on there almost perfectly straight. Which um, it just for, it's strictly appearance, you know, it's still gonna adhere, but always better to do it where it looks the best. I'm just using a single edge razor blade to trim this off flush. You will automatically have enough, you know, tape on a roll to do it at I think what a 38 inch door or so probably. Three well, 36. Door, 36. Yep. So And that's the reason that the sweep is long as well. And I'm actually gonna before I cut this as far as the length, I'm going to close this door and just kind of check my width because I may want to just go ahead and pull it like this and then cut it off on both ends, depending on my gap. I don't want it to just just be brushing on the on the uh, curb here, so we don't have any hang up. And I know it's no fun, but it really only way to do it is to actually get down here to the floor and look at it. Okay, once again, that bottom vital it needs to be just barely off the bottom of that curve. You don't want it brushing on it completely for two reasons. Number one, it's going to hinder the function of the door. It's going to get twisted up under there. And number two, if there is water sitting on that curb, if the curb itself where the tile is is not uh, tilted back into the tub, that, that will actually brush water out of the tub. So you want it just barely missing the curb part here. I like that. One thing you want to make sure one thing you want to make sure on this, that you pull up high enough that the metal is not sticking down below the edge of the door. You want to make sure that that's all sweep under there. That's kind of what I was doing was setting this up a little bit higher. I like to keep it fairly close because mm -hmm. there's less risk of me running a screw into the glass when I actually screw this on. Okay. Uh, but you don't want it obviously sticking below because you want the sweep to have as much action to it as possible. So I'm pretty happy with that. And you can use anything to cut this off. I'm just using a single edge razor blade because it gives me a nice straight cut. Now here's the last little crucial element to these before we put it on there. And I'll get a little closer to show you this. On this drip trough, and we talked about we want it to be sloped back into the shower. While that will channel water back in, there may still be some water sitting in here. So they come with an end plug. They look like this. They go into the uh, and that the handle is on so that the uh, water can't just fly out the end of it. Now you only put it on that end if you dam both ends then it's just going to collect water and they only fit in one end. It's, they give you both that way if you have a left or right hand hinge door and then it fits in there just like that. And that's again it will be on the wide side of the gasket on the handle side. And the only way to set this again is to kind of close this and let the let the vinyl rest and just stick it. Well, one last little thing here. When you set this, this is pre-cut, but you want to make sure that you stay, you know, sixteenth to an eighth away from the latch jam here, because otherwise the front of this can catch as the door opens. So you want to stay just right. a hair short. So just kind of rest it right on the vinyl. And I like to just barely touch it on here so that if I had to pull it off and just check, make sure I'm not going to get it. Now you are going to run two screws in this. This one's fairly easy. You're just going to get 
not all the way, you don't want to get into the actual hinge part here, but the glass only goes in there about, what, three-eighths or so? Right, yeah. So you just want to make sure that you're, you know, for safety's sake, you just want to measure. So you just want to make sure that you're deep enough that you're not going to hit the glass and not into the uh, actual hinge of the door. Okay, now we get both our screws in. Um, this one, uh, one thing to keep in mind on this, this one is fairly easy of the two. That one can end up a little close. That's another reason I was saying you want to make sure you get the, the, the metal part down as close to the bottom of the door as possible. It gives you the, the most opportunity to miss the edge of the glass over right. there. The biggest thing, like I said, this one's fairly easy to miss. That one, just, you know, go through slow and, you know, don't over penetrate it. That's one thing on this too, watch jamming that through because if you go through this you can dimple the outside of the door so that's, you know, or go right through it right. if you get a brand new bit or something, it might just cut right through. Um, but that's on, that's fastened, I'm just going to make sure that that's, should be sweet, you should actually be, hear it sweep over, seal just like that, that's actually just about perfect. Um, really the only thing to do is uh, caulk this. Um, technically it really only requires an exterior bead. I like to run an interior and exterior bead just kind of overkill but I like to make sure that no water is getting behind here so that there's no mold issues or anything like that. So, But uh, that's all there is to it and we're just going to run a clear silicone on it. Right, we're just going to go ahead and run our perimeter bead. Uh, I'm just using clear silicone. Biggest thing on silicone, you just want to make sure it's 100% silicone. Uh, there's a bunch of different kinds. Uh, GE makes good products. We just actually we use this because it's made by a company that's local here. So uh, you're just going to run a, a slow bead. You want to slow down a little bit. Now this is a textured tile, so it's not going to be perfect on it. But the biggest thing is you want to slow down where the grout joints are let them fill in a little bit so that you don't the bumps aren't as noticeable. There's still a little bit of dust down here. We wiped this down a couple times. You just want to make sure that you're not caulking on dust or old caulk. But the other thing too is when you start this bead, basically uh, you want to go all the way into the corner and then start up. That way you're sealing your curve back towards the inside just for some extra assurance. How long do you recommend having the silicone dry before they use the shower? Honestly, I mean, standard's probably about 24 hours. But honestly, any pure silicone product, uh, if it bonds good, if it gets wet, it'll actually skim coat. My only concern is not more with the shower leaking. Initially, it's more of my concern with you wiggle the silicone around a little bit because it's not dry. Mm -hmm. And then you create a future problem. You know, it's not it's not so much an immediate leak issue. Like if I jumped in this right now, it wouldn't leak. Right. But I, if I work this door enough times, well, that silicone's wet. You know, right. then I could have a, a problem down the road. It's always just safer to say 24 hours and be done with it. Again, this isn't really necessary. Uh, I like to run a little tiny bead here between the jam and the front of the curb, just because it's kind of a, a dam area, but. It's not, again, required by any means. It's more of a personal preference. Again, I just try and eliminate any, any potential anything for a callback. Like again, like I was saying, it'll skim coat. If you get your finger wet, it'll actually skim that and smooth it back in there perfectly. Now, some people you can also, if you spray it all over the jams, that's you can do that too. Good thing about that is. It won't stick to anywhere that is, but the bad thing is if you got a spot where it didn't touch, when you push it back in there, it'll skim coat it and it won't stick. So I would, it's always better to just to spray your finger and then just push it back in there. Now, in this case, I would leave the door open. Most silicones and the pure silicones are ace epoxy cure, so you get a lot of fumes. It's not going to hurt you, but it doesn't necessarily smell all that pleasant either. And one other place not to miss on this, the curb is actually deeper than wall jams, so you want to actually go into the corner 
where the wall jam, you know, this would be your curb, the wall jam where it meets. You go ahead and pump that full and that will help seal the end of the threshold so that you don't have water and stuff get under that. Which could leak, but obviously we're sealed on the outside again, so it's sure. really redundant, but... Well, and silicone helps add support to shower doors. Oh, yeah. That's the one thing we tell people all the time. Not only is it a water barrier, but it also helps, you know, bond the metal to the tile. Um, with the proper silicone, the door will lose some of its rattle that some people say that it has. Our doors have a continuous hinge all the way up and down, so we don't have a whole lot of rattle to begin with. But by having proper silicone on both sides, it, uh, it definitely helps uh, secure the door and make it more stable. Absolutely. This door, too, has got that Cardinal 10 product on it, so it's going to come clean fairly easily. You don't really have to spend a lot of elbow grease on it. Just make sure you don't pick up one of the towels you were using for silicone. Well, Paul, I think the door looks good. It turned out great. I think the customer's going to be happy. Good job.